If you've ever wanted to know how to pull live cryptocurrency market prices into Excel, then this is the video for you. This is going to be a quick fire tutorial showing you guys how to use native built in tools to the Excel program from the Microsoft suite in order to effectively run an API call to pull live price data from a free API to do with cryptocurrencies. Of course, that free API is coin market cap and at its fundamental level at its lowest tier it's completely free and it is more than enough in terms of the number of calls that you can make on a monthly basis in order to build something like a dashboard or portfolio tool within excel and as i said we'll be leveraging the built-in suite of tools directly within excel also known as power query in order to achieve this i'll be showing you guys two ways to do this the first being a hard-coded way with the list of slugs directly into the query itself and then the second way being slightly more dynamic in terms of us providing a table of slugs in order to do this. As I mentioned, slug is something that we'll be using in order to interact with the API to effectively tell CoinMarketCap which cryptocurrency ticker, coin or token we actually want to pull. In order to actually find the coin market cap slug, the easiest way to do this is actually go onto the website directly, find the project that you want to view the slug for, and then check the URL in the address bar at the top. That last forward slash, anything after that, effectively the suffix of that last trailing slash, is the slug for the particular project. So in this instance, I'm looking at something called source swap and it's a token called source, which is native to Hedera. Now, instead of the slug for coin market cap being source, which matches the ticker in this instance it is source swap. And for example, for Bitcoin, it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, it's Ethereum. But for some less or more, I should say, obscure cryptocurrencies, the slug is different to that of the ticker that you typically see or even the name. Occasionally they're hyphenated. So you need to use this method to make sure you get your slugs right if you're receiving errors. Cool then. How do we actually build this in order to start pulling live price data into Excel for our given slugs, tickers, or cryptocurrency projects, whatever you want to call them? What you need to do is you need to go up to the ribbon at the top of Excel in a blank workbook under the data section of that ribbon and then click on get data. From this, we're going to go to from other sources and then we're going to use the from web feature. This effectively is going to enable us to write the URL that we're going to be using to talk to the coin market cap API. Click on advanced once this pop up or modal has appeared. And then we're going to start building our URL parts, which you can see in the background right there in order to import some coins via direct query, sorry, via direct connection for some hard coded slugs. So let me just quickly pre-fill some of this information. Now that I've got my base URL in here and a question mark in the second section of that part, we can move forward and add a couple more parts. I will leave that URL linked down in the description. And of course, as well, links to the CoinMarketCap documentation for their API will be left below in order for you guys to actually do a bit more research because there are other ways you can pull quotes from CoinMarketCap as I said, in this instance, we're using the slug feature to pull coins directly, but you can do other things such as top N pulls. So that could be the top 5,000 coins, for example, as per market cap. They have a few different options. We can add a part and effectively this parts builder, as we can see in the preview here, is just concatenating the parts. And this is just a cleaner way for us to visually see how we're building this up. Now, because I want to pull my prices in GBP or Great British Pounds or Sterling, instead of USD, I'm going to be using their convert function, which again is part of the CMC API structure to do this. There are actually a myriad of different conversion currencies that are available via the CoinMarketCap API. And again, you'll be able to find that down below in the description via the documentation. As you can see here with CoinMarketCap, it's really easy. It's just literally the words convert equals followed by the three letter code for your currency. So in this instance, I'm using GBP, but you could be using Euro. So E-U-R, A-U-D perhaps for Australian dollar. And there are tons of others you can convert this directly into. I believe if you just want US dollars, you can actually completely omit this part of the URL directly and it will pull through as US dollars. 
Finally, then I'm going to add one more final part, and that's going to be our list of tickers or slugs in this instance. And I'm just going to use some really basic ones, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Solana and Hedera, or perhaps I want to do Ethereum to match my example on the sheet. Finally, we need to make sure we specify some headers for when we connect to the API. If you don't specify the headers, which in this instance is going to be your pro API key, you will just hit a 400 response from the server because of course they can't verify the request is coming from a valid user. You can create a free CoinMarketCap account and a, or a free CoinMarketCap API account and you'll be able to find your key in your dashboard. Really easy to do. And again, I'll leave that link down in the description for how or where you can create your account. I'm going to populate that information and then I'm going to come back after I've pressed OK. So just to show you again, of course, put this phrase here effectively x hyphen cmc underscore pro underscore api underscore key in the header section and then the second part of the parameter is where your key is going to be put i'm not going to show you guys that for obvious reasons once you've done that press ok and we'll get into the next stage you should now have another window that's opened this is called the power query editor and effectively if you can see the word status and data and not an error message you're doing really well and we're almost at the stage of us pulling some live price data directly into Power Query or into Excel via Power Query. And effectively, it's doing this behind the scenes by passing the JSON response that we are receiving from the CoinMarket API. I want to quickly name my query so that it's something easy for me to reference. So I'm just going to call this CMC API. It's a little bit easier. From this stage, all we need to do now is go to the data section of these two records and click record. And then from here in the ribbon at the top under the convert section, we're just going to convert that into a table. We'll now be presented with the name and value column selection. Under the value selection on the right hand side in the corner, you'll see two arrows facing opposite directions. Left click that and we can now see within that JSON structure, because effectively we are passing through the JSON structure itself the underlying fields that we can pull from these records that we have fetched from CoinMarketCap. For argument's sake and for the tutorial, I'm just going to pull the quote information for this because these are where the prices are contained. Pressing OK on that, we can see another selection of records. So again, we're going to pass through these JSON records or JSON structure um, in order to get to our currency conversion stage. And then again, I'm going to do that a third time to finally get to the underlying price information that we're looking for. Pulling that through, we can see we've got price information from different periods as well as percentage changes over those periods right the way through to things like market cap and market cap dominance. Something to point out here that's really, really important before we load this back into Excel directly is that you pay attention to the data types that are coming through because this could cause you some issues into the future if you are looking at sort of merging things together. So we can set a data type by clicking in the top left here of any of these particular columns and just ensure that they match the data type for these particular fields. So in this instance, I can use either decimal numbers or currencies. I'm just going to use decimal numbers for this sake. The eagle eyed of you here, though, may recognize that my name looks completely wrong and I no longer know which cryptocurrency this belongs to in terms of my pricing information. And that's because of where I expanded some of those steps earlier. If you get to this stage and you realize you've missed something out or you want to add something back, you can flick back through the steps in the Power Query editor on the right hand side and then make changes as you see fit. So when I expanded or before I expanded the value here, I can click on the cog for expand value and it's going to pull up this. This is where I pull through the quote only. In this instance, I might want to pull through the name, symbol and slug as well as it gives me some identification rather than the name here, which effectively is just the coin market cap position in terms of um, the coin market cap unique identifier, whatever they specify, means nothing to me. Um, so obviously I'll just pull through the names instead. Whipping right back through to my change type step, you can see that's all pulled through now very nicely. In order to load this back to our Excel document, we can just press close and load, and that's gonna open up a new sheet and create the connection directly for this particular API. Going forward into the future, if we want some more up-to-date um, pricing information, because this is now being statically loaded into the Excel document, you head up to the data ribbon and you press refresh all. That's going to effectively rerun that query for us 
and pull through the latest pricing information. I think it's about 15 minutes or so is the interval that you can get away with on the free API. So don't expect fully down to the second um, price changes in documents like this. But as I said, on a free version, these are great for building things like dashboards and portfolio trackers. Cool. So we've effectively now built a tool which is pulling that live data from CoinMarketCap directly. But as we mentioned right at the beginning of this video, those slugs or tickers were hard coded directly into the query itself. And for us to update those into the future, we'd have to go back into our queries and connections. We have to right click this, edit, go back to the source step here, and then update our list of tickers by specifying more. And that's quite long winded. An easier way around that is by basically passing through a table that we can update from directly within the spreadsheet. So we'd be able to add stuff to this table and then just press refresh and that would pull through all of our new tickers. So we can give that a go. In this instance, I built my table here with ticker and I'll call this slug because this actually is the slug for these particular projects and converted this or defined it as a table with an Excel. To do that, you just highlight your selection and press control T. It's not going to work for me because I've already done it. And you should be able to see then in the ribbon when I'm clicking on the table, table design appears and I've nicknamed this tickers. Once you've built your table, similar format to this, the most important thing, thing being the slug, which of course matches that format from CoinMarketCap directly. We're just going to click from table slash range under the data section of the ribbon. This is effectively just going to quickly create a query linked back to that table, which will refresh every time we make changes to it and then press refresh within the Excel workbook. Here, I don't need my ticker column anymore, so I'm just going to press remove. And again, this is only removing it from the query itself. And also, pro tip for the format of the CoinMarketCap API, these need to be lowercase. So I'm just going to right click the column, transform, and set these to lowercase. Now we're just going to make some quick changes to the format of this because it's currently in a tabular layout and we need it in a list layout in order to pass it into that API structure. To do that, we're just going to type table.toList following this syntax, open bracket, head towards the end and just close off those parentheses. It's effectively just converted that into a list for us. Going back to our CoinMarketCap API, go under the advanced editor section of the tab and in this source step at the beginning, we're going to replace those hard coded slugs that we had earlier. So if I just highlight my hard coded slugs, of course, keeping the slug section space ampersand, and then we're going to specify in the tickers, which is the name of my other query that I built here. So of course, make sure that matches your name. Now, if I was to run this, it wouldn't actually work because of course it needs to be passed in as a comma separated list. We can get around that really easily within Power Query itself by just using the text.combine function built in. So text.combine, open parentheses, tickers, comma inside here, and then our separator value is of course going to be a, copa, a comma separated or wrapped, sorry, in quotation marks. Pressing done on that, and we can see immediately it's updated to reflect my list of tickers that I've got in there. So a few more have come through. We've got source token, source of swap, got quant, chain link, Ethereum, etc. They've all updated to match directly what was being passed into my tickers table. I can now press close and load. It's going to load those changes back in for me. It's just duplicated a sheet here for me based on those tickers. One way to get around that is under my load two options. I just say I only want this to create a connection. I don't need my table to be loaded twice into my particular workbook. As we can see here, at any point now I can go through and change these. So let's just say I don't want to see Ethereum anymore. I want Litecoin. Is that the ticker? I can't even remember. Litecoin. And then I can go up to my data tab and press refresh all. It's going to run through and load my six rows back in. And if I go look at the underlying data here, you can see now that Litecoin is being pulled through dynamically for me into my table. Of course, from here on out, you can go ahead and build out your dashboards and portfolios directly in Excel by pulling the live data from CoinMarketCap. Hopefully this has helped you guys out. If it has, please be sure to leave a like. Of course, as well, if you've got any comments or questions, leave those down below as I do try to respond to them or as many of them as I possibly can. Also, feel free to subscribe for more content like this. I also produce a lot of content surrounding the cryptocurrency ecosystem as a whole. Until the next one, I'll catch you then. Cheers.